Hi guys, I wanted to talk today a little bit about robotics and the use of them in medicine and even transhumanism. Now first let's talk about how robotics are being used in medicine today. Uh, one good example are cochlear implants. Now this is an implant that uh, people who have suffered hearing damage can use in order to try and recapture some sense of hearing. It has a microphone, sends electrical signals to some auditory nerves, and then you can, with time and practice, learn to hear again. Uh, that's been in use for several years now. We've also started to see some optical implants that use cameras to give a sense of vision to people who have lost vision in an eye or both eyes. Uh, in this case, they tend to be very blocky, low resolution, and I'm talking 16 pixel low resolution images, but it gives at least some sense of vision. Beyond that, we're starting to see some interesting artistic uses of robotics. Uh, there are artists like Tanya Vlach and Rob Spence, these are both artists who have lost the use of one eye, who are thinking about replacing the eye with some sort of camera, more as an artistic uh, expression than as a way of recapturing a sense. The camera will not be connected to their brain, so they won't have the vision aspect. Then we have people who have elected to amputate a damaged limb in order to replace it with a robotic counterpart to recapture some of that functionality they lost due to injury. Two men in Austria so far have elected to have this sort of surgery, and in both cases they suffered irreparable harm to an, uh, a limb in order to, before they had it uh, amputated to be replaced with a robotic counterpart. But could we be that far away from people who have decided to do this electively with a healthy limb? Perhaps it's someone who just wants to have an arm that can bend both ways or a wrist that can rotate 360 degrees. What's stopping us from doing that? Are we ethically bound to avoid such surgeries or is that actually going to be something we're gonna see in the future? People who are futurists may say that transhumanism is just a matter of time. We're going to have these people who are going to have enhanced bodies whether we like it or not. Question is, when is it gonna happen? Personally, I think we're a couple of decades off. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes. Hey, you want to hear something cool, dude? Always. The plastic used by Dasani and plant bottle technology that you're drinking right there mm -hmm. isn't like your ordinary petroleum-based product. Up to 30% of this bad boy is made from plants, and it's still 100% recyclable. Right, so you know I know a thing or two about plastic, right, Chuckers? Oh, yeah. All right, so um, with traditional PET bottles, about 70% is made of a purified terephthalic acid, right? All right. The other 30% give or take, is usually made of some stuff called uh, monoethylene glycol, which is derived from petroleum. Mm. What plant bottle technology does is replace that MEG with uh, plant-based material like um, molasses or sugar cane or something. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. You know what else? What? It performs the exact same as traditional PET plastic. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to tell the difference by looking at it, it weighs the same, has the same shelf life, right. and the same chemical composition, and you know what that means. What? It's not going to impact the taste. No, it sure doesn't. It's my understanding that we're just at the very beginning of the plant bottle evolution, right? Oh, yeah? Yeah. So the Coca-Cola company is working with researchers to figure out a way to make these things 100% plant-based. Wow. Yeah. And they're looking for new sources of materials, like deriving sugars from fruit peels or stems, things we normally think of as waste right now. That's awesome. Yeah. It's going to be pretty big, too. How big? Well, in 2010, the Coca-Cola company produced 2.5 billion plant bottles. Wow. In 2011, that number is going to more than double. Holy cow. Yeah. That's awesome. So, packaging that's less wasteful so it can actually be a resource for the future. Mm -hmm. You know what I think? What? I think people should look for this plant bottle logo right there and the green cap. Mm -hmm. Because think about it, a world with less waste and less pollution mm -hmm. means a better environment for everybody. That's true. And that sounds pretty cool to me. Me too. Question. What's that? How are we going to get down? I have no idea. <laughs>